everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 2023 NEC changes for load calculations in Article 220, and we have got some major changes here. So the we're going to break it into two parts because it's a lot to cover. Super excited about this. As you guys know, I spend a lot of time in Article 220 teaching the code, teaching exam prep. So these are major changes for me. I'm super excited about it. So first thing when we come into Article 220 is we're going to notice a new part, and it's 220.5c, and it addresses how we calculate the square foot of a structure. Now, this was previously listed in 220.12. Now 220.12 is gone, and we are now reading it from 220.5c. And this is a huge change, y'all. So it says the floor area for each place shall be the outside dimensions of the building or dwelling unit or other area involved. So I really like that. It says for dwelling units, the calculated floor area shall not include. And this is where the huge change comes. It used to be in the 2017, the square foot did not count for open porches, garages, unused or unfinished spaces that are not adaptable for future use. So just to clarify, if we're doing a load calculation and we're trying to figure up the square feet of the home so we can figure out our general square foot load calculation for lighting and general receptacles, historically we would use the outside dimensions of the house. So if it was a 30 by 30, you know, we would use those dimensions, but we would not include garages, open porches, and basements and areas that are not adaptable for future use, which is subject to your and your inspector's interpretation. Now they've gotten rid of garages. So let me read it. It says now in the 2023, it says the floor area shall not include open porches or unfinished areas not adaptable for future rooms as habitable rooms or occupiable spaces. So they reworded that part, but they've gotten rid of garages. And this is huge. So I don't know about you. If you wire brand new construction homes I, for the last three code cycles, I have considered the garage part of the general square foot because all the wiring that has to go in there now to make it code compliant. So like when I'm calculating a home and it's 30 by 30 in a 20 by 20 garage, if I'm calculating the square foot price to, to charge them to wire a new house, I count the garage now. We didn't used to count the garage. Well, now we do. And now the NEC has finally recognized that there is a large load going on inside of the garage. And I had a feeling that this was coming. When they added the 20 amp required branch circuit for garages in the 2017 codebook. So this is a huge change. Now when you do your load calculation for a residence or a structure, you do count garages. And excuse me, let me be very careful here. It says for dwelling units, you have to count the garage. Shall be calculated and you shall not have to count the areas including open porches or unfinished areas not adaptable for future use as habitable rooms or occupiable spaces. So I like how they clarified that up. It used to read like this. It used to read that you would not include open porches, garages, unused or unfinished spaces not adaptable for future use. So unused or unfinished spaces not adaptable for future use. Well, now it reads not adaptable for future use as habitable rooms or occupiable spaces. So I think that leads a little more into the darkness in between you and your inspector to figure out what that means. So I'm super excited about these changes. Just to recap, you do have to count garages in your square foot general VAs when calculating dwelling units. Next part is they've just done some restructuring and I'm really excited about it. So you know, we have a brand new article uh, or brand new section, uh, 210.11, and that's for maximum loads. And they break down more specifically some of the specific loads, including motors, and they touch on it and kind of give you a prescription for how to figure those. And then I do want to stop on inductive slash LED lighting loads. That's part B of this new section. And it says, for the circuits supplying the units that have ballast transformers or auto transformers or LED drivers. So that includes all of those type lighting. It says, it says it shall be calculated based on the total amperage rating of such units and not the total watt of lamps. So that could be a huge change. I've not gotten into a fixture yet, you know, since I've read this and seen if it's going to be more if you use the amperage or if it's going to be less if you use the amperage. So let's say you had a 
you know, seven amp rated fixture, but the total wattage only equaled 3.5 amps. It's saying here, if that's the case, you would have to use the seven amps for the load calculation. So this is something that we're going to have to work out. It could be less. You could have a three amp rated device and you could have higher wattage, which wouldn't make as much sense. But if you guys want to check that out and drop it in the comments below, that'd be awesome. Is next time I get around a light fixture, I'll look at the amp rating. I'll look at the total wattage of bulbs. And I think when you get into LEDs, it's going to be a huge discrepancy. Probably going to be a three or four amp device, and it's only using one amp in wattage, but they're wanting you here to calculate the total amper rating and not the total wattage. So that's a pretty big change, especially if you're doing large load calculations or commercial load calculations. And part C is cooking appliances. It really just cleans house, and it says, hey, you can use table 220.55, including notes 4, 5, and 6, which we're going to be covering tomorrow. I broke this into two pieces because there's a lot going on here. And when we get to 220.41, in, in, 2020, in the 2020 code, they added a 220.41. And I say it was added in the 2020. I'll have to double check, but it's not listed here in my 2017, but I have a 2020 and I'll check it. And it's not highlighted and it doesn't say new. So it leads me to believe that in the 2020 they added Article 220.41 and or Section 220.41, and now they've added and cleaned it up a bit. So really what they're doing here is this is the minimum load unit for dwelling units. They still kept it at three VAs per square foot, which is good, and they've just broke down all of the things that are included in that three VAs because it can get confusing if you don't pay attention. So it says all general use receptacles that are 20 amps or less, including those connected to the specified circuits in 210.11C3 and C4. Receptacle outlets that are specified in 210.52E and G, so these are likely going to be your specific outlets that it requires inside the home, and all the lighting outlets that are specified in 210.70. So if you didn't have a clear view of that, the general square foot VAs for a residence is 3 VAs per square foot. That equals 3 watts per square foot. So if you have a 1,200 square foot house, you would take 1,200 square foot and you would multiply it by three. And then there's some demand factors that you can do. But after you do that math, that will be your calculated load. And that includes all your general use receptacles in the entire home, all the special receptacles that are in the entire home, the, the normal ones. And it also includes all the lighting in the entire home. So just to recap, three VAs per square foot, that includes all receptacles, all normal receptacles, 20 amps or less. That includes all specified receptacles in 210.52E and G. And it also includes all of your lighting outlets inside of the home. And that covers the majority of the home. Then things that we will add are dryers, ranges, electric vehicle chargers, water heaters, and all of these different things. Well, this is the first part of the 2023 Article 220, a lot of 20s going on here. This is the first round of the 2023 Article 220 changes. We're going to pick up tomorrow right where we left off. I hope you guys have a great day. I want you to know that I'm praying for you today. I want to see you guys win in any way. If there's any way that I can help you in life or business, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.